Hi guys, my name is John Christian and welcome back for another studio session. This time a little bit more in depth about mastering and to be specific, it's about the dynamics of the mastering. So check me out. So when it comes to the dynamics of a mastering, there are a few things that you can do, like compression, limiting and so. And to give you an example, here's what I did with Next Level. I know that some engineers would call me crazy, but normally guys are just using limiting in the end of the chain. And I'm going to do that as well, but I use two limiters. I also use a limiter in a very early stage of the mastering because then I just cut off like two or three dBs of the dynamic range and not more than that, but that's making it easier to go into a compressor. I'm going to show you how I did that with Next Level and how I do it in, in general. It's just like cutting off three dBs. And let's say this is it. The sound is not really changing, but the only thing that is changing is that there is less dynamic in there. That's the first limiter that's on the chain. This can also be hardware, of course, but I would like to explain it inside the box because then you all can, can do it and, and try and work with it. So that's the reason why. After this one is limited a little bit, I'm going into a compressor and I love the glue because the glue has a real great function because it's basically a parallel compressor and parallel compressor means that it mixes the signal which is compressed with the uncompressed signal. So you can really push it hard and then just make a mix between both of the signals to see what, what the best outcome will be. And so this is what's happening then. Here it's pumping a little bit about minus four. Sometimes on higher points it will be minus five. This is what you hear is the totally compressed signal. And here you see there is a mix. Now it's 100% wet. This is 100% dry. Without compression at all. And I'm going to make a mix exactly on the 50%. going to compress it even harder. And to me this is not really sounding over compressed and the good thing about it is that you really want to have a steady volume in the production and as you can see if I zoom in on the level meter here it's already very steady. I think there's just three or four more dBs of headroom in the dynamic range, but it's already really pumping and really loud. And that's what I wanted with this track. And then on the end of the track, on the end of the chain, there is a limiter, which is there for the end limiting, of course. So I use the max volume for that. Even when I'm doing an analog mastering, I'm using this plugin on the end of the chain. And obviously for me, this part here is is an important thing because I want to make a loud master. And as you can see, it's just doing not so much anymore. I'm just cutting off, let's say one or two dBs. And I'm pushing the low level uh, almost 10 dBs. This is what it's like. This is when I'm exaggerating, of course. But it's really a powerful way of compressing or even limiting. So this is what I do just a little bit. So it's being reduced and pumped at the same time. And that's why I love this plugin so much. This is without and I'm going to unbypass it so you can hear the difference. The difference, you really have to focus on the difference, but it's because it's just uh, influencing the stereo image as well as the power, but not so much. But because it's mastering, everything has to be done very subtle. 
So this is without. And this is with it. So it's really powerful already. And what I do just before mastering is a little saturation, a little tube saturation. There is a great plugin from SPL who does that. And it's, it's called Twin Tube. It's just to, to put on some extra harmonics in it. And here you can hear what the difference is. This is when I start it's without it, then I'm going to, to exaggerate it. But this is what it does. So what you hear is it's that it's affecting the higher frequencies, the, the high midfield and even the, the top frequencies. But if you just push this a little, this is an effect that you cannot achieve with, a, with an equalizer. This is just by harmonics. And it's really great to just search the internet for what harmonics are really doing, because it's a really great psychological thing that there is there. And so that's the reason why it's always on my mastering as well. And so let's find the right setting for this track here. Well, for now, I think this is the right setting. And in this, there is a little personal trick of myself. So I, I think it could be useful for you guys if you use this as mastering and especially the whole SPL bundle is really great for using uh, for, the, for, the, for the attack and all that kind of stuff, but not really on mastering. This is really a good thing to use on, on mastering. And so, there's really a lot more to tell you about mastering, but we will do that in the next episode and I hope to see you there. If you have any question about this chapter or maybe another, just go to myfacebook.com slash DJ John Christian and leave your comments there.